All right. Sorry about taking so long. Uh, it finally stopped raining. Uh, it started uh, Saturday and it rained pretty much nonstop and just quit a little bit ago. Uh, supposed to be sunshine or partly cloudy, some sunshine tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get out here and do something. Got to mow my grass. I got a hay field going. But uh, I apologize. It's the reason I haven't been out here doing any videos because I work outside. So, okay. Anyway, where we're at, uh, there's a sensor right there. And there's a sensor right back here. Well, these wires come up these are the two black and two white off of that back sensor there this sensor i just uh this here i just unplugged them did away with them uh that sensor there like i said it has uh two black two white so what i did is right here is here's the two white here's the two black once you tie them together uh it can start the motor in that well what I'm going to do now is I bought some uh, water, heat shrink watertight uh, connectors. This is where the white comes out of the ignition, right there. And there's where it goes into the harness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that right here. This one here, the ground wire is right here and there's the ground on the ignition so i don't need all this length here so what i'm gonna do is just get rid of this wire together all together and just the ignition will now ground there and that'll bypass both of these sensors now since this motor came out of another tractor the wiring's different lengths and all that <laughs> And somebody hodgepodge the shit out of the wiring here. Uh, this terminal here I am do getting away from because it has the anti-backfire on the carburetor. So when you turn energize the ignition, it sends power here. And there's a solenoid. Let me get over here. There's a solenoid on the bottom of the carb here. Drop this down and there's a plunger on there. All you gotta do is wire snips and cut that plunger off and then screw this back up and then you no, no, no longer need the power wire there. I'm doing away from that. Uh, they're very problematic. Uh, so all of a sudden if you're cranking, you know, a lot of mowers still have it, but if you're cranking and cranking and cranking and just ain't working, if you have no gas to your carb and you can't figure out why because your tank's full, if you have one of them on your carburetor, that's your problem right there. So, this will get, is going bye-bye. These wires here are for the headlights. This wire here is when you shut off the ignition, it grounds this wire out. And that's what's going to kill this. This is for your charging system. I was going to redo my own harness. But I was able to simplify this one enough that I'm not going to worry about it. This does run all the way back up to the wiring up here. And comes back out. And it comes out to the headlight wires here. If uh, I was going to build my own harness. And I'll post a picture of the schematic I use. You need one of these to go to the ignition, and the other one would go to your headlights, you know, if you're doing your own harness. Since I'm still going to use, I'm just going to shorten these wires all up to clean this, so I'm going to cut them and re-splice them and heat shrink tube them so they're more like this and get rid of all that surplus. And what I'm going to do for that is I ran to the store the disaster area this weather's had a bunch of parts come in so i do have 
the part came in so i'll be doing a video if the rain ever stopped this is the part i needed to redo the clutch linkage in f350 that's going to get rid of that uh plastic joint in there and no more problems so that's that i picked up an oil filter for the f350 uh gotta figure out what, what's in what bag oh i picked up some more of these i love these things for when you're pouring oil in something you just screw that right onto the container. It'll take the gallon, quart size, whatever. You just screw that on there. This you just pull off and that caps this. Uh, these are like 98 cents a piece. Uh, and I really like, their, they work really well. Finally got some paper towels back for out here. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Uh, they're the heat shrinkable ones so i'm gonna be shortening all these wires and using these that way i got a nice uh watertight connection i've already tried turning the motor over making sure because a lot of this is just pieced together and i just wanted to make sure it was right and so it's all half ass and that's why i got these now i'm gonna do it the right way because the wiring's all right it'll crank the motor over and all that uh one last thing i'm gonna do uh, uh i haven't done this motor yet i know it runs good but i am gonna pull the cover off and i am gonna do the valve adjustment on it that's really simple to do I don't know if that will be in this video or not if i ever get any questions or comments and somebody wants to know how to do it real easy I'll, I'll make a video for it but otherwise i'm just trying to get this done because as soon as i get the wiring done i can get the pulley right here onto the bottom of the motor that way this is the deck one here this one's for the uh motor to the transmission that's the spacer i'll get that on there and get the spacing set right so i can get the belt put on there i do gotta see if there's a number on there if there isn't i'm gonna have to just measure it so i can get a new belt for it but uh then we'll be doing a plow test on it so that will be part of this video uh so just for right now since it stopped raining i just got off work for i'd come out here for a little bit so i'm just gonna turn around and get these wires straightened out and uh maybe i'll get that pulley on yet today and then Hopefully in the next couple days, I want to get a plow test done so I can get the floorboards put back on this and all that, get it buttoned up and uh, move on to, I got, I got to get the Chevy started because I got a bunch of frame repair to do on that and uh, the flatbed Ford, not that one, but my flatbed Ford uh, that will be doing that clutch linkage. I got to straighten out some coolant hoses because uh, people, uh, somebody used, uh, oh, when you're doing dishes, you got that little sprayer. They put a damn piece of that on there and uh, just some people just shouldn't work on shit. If you're going to do it half-ass, what's the sense of doing it? So, all right. All right, last you're going to hear about the wiring. This is the schematic i use sorry it's on the phone i really need to print it there it's starter and all that i have it blowing up but it's just the basic wiring you really need to make one of these work and i'm gonna try going and uh printing it so i can have a bigger copy all in one page to show but if anyone is interested or could really could use this wiring harness, uh, I'll put my uh, email in the description of the video. And if you message me, I, w I can email this to you. And it's just basic plain Jane to make it work. Uh, and then this is it. No more wiring on this thing. Uh, so let me get out of that. The wiring is all cleaned up. 
I put tape every so often. It makes it easier to put it in a loom. Kill wire, charging wires. There it goes up. This is all I do have. The loom is already started. I got to finish. I was just showing before I put the loom on it. There's that, that. I do have to put the face plate on, put the ignition back, you know, the in there and that. But there it is. I just got to finish putting the loom on it. I'm going to run another piece of loom down here. I will run these headlight or all these wires and the headlight wires in the same loom. It'll come down here and then it'll split off for the charging wires and then this uh uh, kill wire will split off and then the plug for the headlights will terminate here and I'll have loom on it it does have the tabs to hold the loom so all right no more wiring now it's just gonna be the pulley and a blade test and then we're gonna get the running boards put on it and we're done then we you're gonna next after that the videos are gonna either be the f-350 the Chevy or the five ton so I can get that monstrosity put on well you can't see it so I can get that monstrosity put onto the plow truck all right so I'll continue this video after I get the pulley put on and spaced and the belt on and we'll get the plow on and do a plow test all right good morning uh clean the motor up a little bit I'm still going to pressure wash it. I still have to... Uh, I'm going to run the old valves on it. Which is single cylinder, so pretty simple. Put a new oil filter on it. Change the oil. I did get my mishap here fixed where I had that a quarter inch too long. And it was rubbing on the motor. So I cut that down, shortened it for the gas tank. Just waiting for the paint to dry and then I'm going to put a battery gas tank, throw some gas in it and I'm going to try firing it up. I did get my little tab welded here so now when this comes forward it won't go all the way down making it hard for the person operating it to reach. So uh, I'll come back when we're getting ready to start it. I've got pretty much everything touched up on it. Um, I still haven't put the floorboards on it, but like I said, I'm going to wait on that until I do a plow test. That way I can inspect all the welds. But uh, I think this is going to, as long as it starts, I'm going to put the blade out do a quick push. And uh, this is going to be a wrap up. The few small details I'll worry about uh, later. Uh, but at least it'll be running and operating. I'll get the floorboards on it and and overhead and that I'll probably run that if somebody shows interest in buying it. And I mean, if I get free time before then, I'll run the overhead on it and all that. But yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, let me get this paint dried, get the gas tank and battery put in, and we will try a start test. All right. All right. We got the battery in, got the gas tank, got that hooked up. The choke cable seized. I got another rider out back, but I it ain't gonna affect me from trying to start it. I'll just do the choke manually. But there's the key. It won't start right now, but we I guess we'll find out if I did the wiring half right. And Okay, we're ahead of the ball game. Let's get, uh, I gotta see if I got any gas. I'm, all my gas cans are empty. I think I'm gonna have to go run and get some, but, uh, uh, I think we're ready to try starting it, and I'll be back in a little bit, which will only be a second for you guys, but I'll have to run to town and get some gas, and, uh, we'll go from there, but that's where we're at. I am gonna have to do something with this. Right now it's just got a little straight pipe. I'm debating if I'm gonna keep it that way and just put a loop here and run it down so it comes right out. You know, like the old drag cars had them where it just shot out the side. I may do something like that or, you know, just something stupid. I don't know. That's a little bit of feedback from people because uh, I am gonna be posting a video here in a little bit about my flatbed. 
And that one, I am going to encourage feedback because I have three different ways I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. And I do have, you know, I like all three, so I'm going to kind of leave it up to the viewers. So a little bit of feedback would be nice. Thank you. That is why I am going to add the exhaust pipe, cut it off here more, angle it down and out. One, Briggs & Stratton has a minimum requirement of 12 inches so you don't burn the valves. This I just threw on here when I started this project. Now I need to form it so I get it over 12 inches, but that was quarter throttle and how loud she is i am having a fuel i think the fuel old fuel filters plugged i'm not getting good fuel to it so i'm gonna have to change that out but uh she runs i, I can't hear nothing now but uh, she runs so uh i'm gonna try and do a plow test yet but i gotta get this fuel line replaced and i think that's gonna be pretty much it for the snow beast uh i you know it's just minor stuff i gotta do now i gotta do the exhaust i gotta replace this fuel line or at least the fuel filter um but i think that's gonna be it i want to do a plow test and i might do that in a later video with one of the pickups uh you know at the beginning show a quick plow test with it but that's gonna be it uh i am gonna start on the flatbed all my exhaust parts came in so we're gonna go from there I'm kind of back me and the wife had a deal before I could put start on the flatbed part of it was I had to get this finished so I didn't leave off I got the blade on it got the hood on it I still have to put the exhaust but at least I can it's I just minor things so quick plow test I don't have any loose gravel my piles over there so but
and there we go I do have the feet for the plow so I'll be able to I got those uh, the only thing left I gotta get the muffler on it and put the floorboards on it and the floorboards bolt along here and to this that's why this is flimsy once the floorboards are on this is done uh, but that's it dedicated plow tractor has a six-speed transmission uh, it's for sale it's finished uh, muffler and floorboards and I'll get that done this week but she, that's it she's for sale Thank you.